You're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This plant portrait is for cardinal flower, Lobelia cardinalis. Cardinal flower grabs our attention in late summer with its bright red flowers beckoning us from a distance. As we move closer to the plant, we can see the flowers in a terminal inflorescence about three to four feet above the base of the plant. Flowers bloom from the bottom to the top of the inflorescence. The blooming cardinal flowers are typically closely spaced along the flower stalk. We can see the flowers are arranged alternately up the stalk. Each flower has a short peduncle. Consequently, this inflorescence is referred to as a raceme. Sometimes the raceme will bend over with the weight of its flowers. Let's take a closer look at individual flowers. The flower has a green calyx with five narrow sepals supporting the red corolla. Cardinal flower has two sets of petal lips, which can be easily distinguished in this newly opening flower. The lower lip is most obvious with its three lobes. The upper lip has two narrow lobes, which flare out to either side of the flower. Cardinal flower's reproductive parts consist of a long tube made up of five united stamens around the style. When the flower first opens, the tip of the tube has fused anthers, the curled fuzzy gray part, around a closed stigma. The anther's pollen is transferred to other previously open flowers. Then this newer flower's two-lobed or bifid stigma extends beyond the anthers and opens to receive pollen from other flowers. Pollinators include hummingbirds butterflies, and other insects. To summarize, the flower is on a peduncle with a calyx of five narrow sepals. The red corolla has an upper lip with two lobes and a lower lip with three lobes. The long tube in the center includes five fused stamens around the style, with united anthers at the tip around the stigma, which is closed in this flower. Cardinal flower has an alternate leaf arrangement. Leaves are lanceolate in shape. Leaf margins are toothed, sometimes with coarse teeth, sometimes with fine teeth. You may notice tiny white dots along the leaf margin. The underside of a mature leaf is lighter green and prominently shows the pinnate veins. The slightly ridged stem is large and stiff to support this tall plant. The simple leaves become smaller as they grow nearer to the inflorescence. As new flowers develop and bloom at the top of the cardinal flower raceme, the first flowers to bloom at the bottom are dying. The petals shrivel, along with the central tube with its extended stigma. The corolla turns gray-brown, while the calyx remains green and swells as it encloses the seed capsule at the base of the flower. Narrow green bracts are now evident, intermingled with the seed capsules. These bracts have fine teeth and small white dots along the margin. The calyx begins to turn from bright green to brown as the seeds mature. A single raceme may have as many as 100 developing seed capsules. When the seed capsules are dark brown, the seeds inside are mature. A single seed capsule may have up to 500 tiny brown seeds. Cardinal flower seeds are dispersed either through wind shaking the plant or by rain forcefully hitting the seed capsules. While the seeds mature in their capsules, the leaves begin turning color as they die. 
The stem also turns from green to reddish yellow to brown. If you carefully pull away other plant material from the base of the cardinal flower plant, you will find a small basal rosette of leaves. These newly grown leaves arise next to the large stalk from this year's plant. The basal leaves are likely to remain green through the winter as they continue their process of photosynthesis. The following spring, look amidst the leaf litter for the red-green basal rosette of cardinal flower leaves, possibly with the remains of a dried stalk from last year. The rosette begins to grow more leaves. Notice the red tinge on the underside of the newest leaves. Over the next months, cardinal flower grows more alternate leaves along its single rising stalk. The newest leaves are typically red until they mature to become green. Observe how the leaves on some plants have smoother margins, although still toothy, while other plants have leaves with lots more toothiness to their margins. In the middle of summer, the plant growth at the apex changes to the beginnings of the inflorescence. As the inflorescence develops, it looks like a lot of green bracts pointing toward the tip. Eventually, we can see some beginning flower buds mixed in with all those bracts. As the plant stalk lengthens, the individual flower buds become more distinguishable. At first, the cardinal flower buds are relatively short and pink or yellow. Gradually, the buds lengthen and turn red. The first flowers to mature, at the bottom of the raceme, start to swell, and then to bloom. Here's a close view of a corolla expanding outwards and separating into distinct petals. The lower lip, with its three lobes, is dropping downwards at the front of the flower. The upper lip, with its two narrower lobes, shifts upwards and back. Once again, it's late summer, and the cardinal flower plant is in full bloom with intensely red flowers throughout the inflorescence for several weeks. Cardinal flower appreciates wet soil and grows best along stream banks, near springs, or in swamps. You can find this native plant in most regions of North America, except for the Upper Northwest. This is Angeline. Thank you for watching and learning about Lobelia cardinalis, also known as cardinal flower. Visit IdentifyThatPlant.com for more images of cardinal flower, for a blog post comparing this Lobelia with two other Lobelias, for plant identification resources, and for information about how you can confidently master the skill of correct plant identification.